Okay, so I want to say this at the top because <laughs> y'all know how we have to do over here. This broadcast is not going to be for everyone. So let me just go through the list. If you're a woman listening to me and you're struggling with your self-esteem, don't listen to this. This, this won't be for you. If you're a woman listening and you are easily jealous of other women or you have those types of issues that you've not yet worked through, please don't listen to this. I don't want you to be triggered. You know, my style is that I, I speak what I see as the truth of a situation. Okay. That's how it is here. It's not going to change for anything or anyone. And so I don't want your feelings to get hurt. I don't want you to, you know, you know, uh, try to listen anyway. Y'all know how we are, especially us as women. We're very nosy and we always feel like we're stronger than we may be. Well, I'm going to listen anyway. And then we hear something that triggers us. And most of us don't know how to handle triggered feelings. Okay. So there's my warning. There's my disclaimer. Now, come on in here. Let's get started. Come on. Well, guys, welcome back to My View on the View, a commentary program all about my favorite show, ABC of View. Thank y'all for joining me for another episode. I appreciate all of y'all. Hope you're having a great time and a great day. Listen, if you're in California, my prayers are with you. Please be safe. Take care of yourself and your family. Check on your neighbors. Check on your friends and your family who may live in a different county. Just check and make sure everybody's okay. Okay. All right, guys. So a lot of you saw my video when I was hanging out uh, in Barnes and Nobles. That's one of my favorite places to go. I know <laughs> it's probably very boring for some people, but I actually love to read. And so I love being around books. I love, love, love. I got that from my dad. My dad was a huge reader. He was very uh, studious. And so I just love Barnes and Noble. And so I was showing you that I was standing there. Okay. Cause I'm on a budget now. I was standing there reading the whole interview that Sunny gave to People Magazine, where she shared her truth, you know, uh, of, you know, deciding that, hey, after years and years of struggling with body uh, image, image issues and self-consciousness, she decided to just, you know, take the leap and have plastic surgery, you know, and so she had liposuction, excuse me, liposuction uh, from around her waist under her chin. And she also had a breast reduction and a breast lift. Okay. So it wasn't just the reduction. She didn't say that part on the show, but she had a breast lifted as well. And I was reading that article. And so I want to give you my review of it. I want to talk to you about a few things. So first, let me just say that I'm proud of Sunny for deciding to do something for herself that makes her feel good. You know, um, as women, uh, shout out to all my men listening because men struggle with self image and body image is, excuse me, self consciousness and body images as well is not something that women own, but we're talking about a woman today. So I'm going to focus on her. So I'm really uh, proud because a uh, glad rather, because as women, it's really important that we feel good. You know what I'm saying? That we like the way we look. OK, I'm now just speaking all of outer things, OK, that we like the way we look. We like the way we feel in our clothes, where our clothes look on us and things of this nature. Uh, you know that most of the diet industry, most of the even now, you know, the health industry is getting into the quack stuff, too. Uh, they're selling everything you can imagine. Um, but it's geared towards women because we are so susceptible, susceptible to those types of marketing strategies and things of that nature, because we we want to feel good. And we know society tells us we need to look a certain way and all of that. So when it comes to all the outer stuff, and I want you to try to stay with me, OK, when it comes to the outer stuff, I'm glad that she did this for herself. And I really, really liked um, and she told us this on the show and it's in the article that she didn't tell Manny um, until two days before her surgery. And she said, I'm just giving you information. This is what I'm going to do. I'm not asking your permission. I love that because sometimes people feel like that just because you're married and you're in a partnership that you have to get people's, uh, your husband or shout out to my men, your wives permission to do something. Um, I do think there's a certain um, respect that should be in marriage that when there comes, comes to certain decisions, like if it's going to totally change the way you look, like I've seen some people that have facelift and they look like a whole different person. Well, I think, you know, what your spouse has to say should matter in those types of things. Um, but I like that she, um, you know, has her own voice in her marriage and that she was sharing that with us. Now, let me uh, give you some of the highlights that she didn't talk about on the show that were in the article. For those of you who didn't read it, um, she talked about how Ever since she was 16, she was self-conscious uh, and struggled with body image issues that 
she would spend time, even as a grown woman, um, up until recently, scrolling on social media. She talked about Instagram, looking at photos of people and admiring their bodies, comparing her body to theirs and saying, you know, to herself, Oh, you know, like she, she did tell this part on the show. Oh, they must be intermittent fasting. Or she said in the article, eating clean and exercising. And she was just comparing herself to those people. She also talked about in the article how she was going to exercise classes and she just wasn't losing this weight around her waist in particular. And she talked about how in this article, ever since she had her son and daughter, she never liked the way her waist looked and she always wanted to, you know, wish things were different. And she also mentioned in this article that she really, really, all of her life has just struggled with being very, very self-conscious. And so having kind of summarized it for you, I now want to transition to saying, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I haven't known a lot of people that had plastic surgery. I have known a few people. Um, They weren't close, close friends. None of my friends have had any plastic surgery. Um, But I remember I worked with a a young lady who uh, had liposuction. I remember one of my clients, uh, she took her tax refund money and instead of helping her kids, <laughs> she went and had a breast, uh, breast enlargement. Okay. But I remember specifically, uh, my godmom, um, there was a girl that attended church there and I had seen this girl, you know, I knew her name, but I didn't, I wasn't friends with her and she was a very large woman. And so some years later, I was visiting with my godmom in her office, talking with her. And this person came in, the lady came in and she was the size I had, you know, only seen her in. But she mentioned during this conversation that she had had uh, that surgery. I I can't remember which one it was, but you know, the one where they, uh, I think it was the one star hat. I can't remember. I get the sleeve and the body, whatever. I get them all kind of confused. But at any rate, so I didn't want to ask her because I wasn't friends like that with her. So when she left, I asked my godmom, I said, she had, you know, whatever that surgery was. And she said, oh yeah. I said, well, what happened? I said, because that's a, she's the same size. She said, she gained it all back. She said, she gained it all back. And what I want to say is that when I was reading the article about Sunny, and I know this is very surface. I've not talked to Sunny. I've not had any, uh, any time with her to interview her. But based on everything that she said in the People Magazine interview, this is not going to fix her problem because her problem is not an outer problem. And I feel like in, 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 in this world, we try to tackle self-esteem and self-worth issues from the outside in. And we still just don't know that's not the way it works. We have to tackle internal issues starting from the inside and then work our way out. Because here's what happens. It's the same thing that happened with that, the lady I was telling you about that went to my God mom's church. When we try to approach fixing our problems, our inner problems from the outside by artificial means or whatever, it could be, it doesn't even have to be plastic surgery. It could just be someone who loves name brand clothes. Like they have to have name brand clothes because it makes them feel a certain way. I have to have a St. John. I have to have you fill in the blank. I just can't get something from Walmart or Target or, uh, you know, Macy's. It's got to be a thousand dollars or more. They don't understand the print, the life principle. And that's why so many people go back and back and back for plastic surgery because it becomes an addiction then. Um, they don't understand that Approaching it from the outer when that's not the problem, this is what normally happens. You ha- you go through what they call the euphoria of the change. So you go through this period, it, could, it lasts different times for different people, but you go through this period where you're so excited, you feel beautiful, you look beautiful, it feels great. I mean, you look great. Like she said in the article, I'm walking around my house naked all the time. She said, you may even see me naked on the view, you know? And she just talked about how much she loves her body. See, that's the euphoric um, phase, okay? And we think, oh, I've solved my problem. There's no need for me to compare myself with anybody anymore. I, I love my body now, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, okay? But because the real problem wasn't fixed, which had nothing to do really with the outer, what happens is after the euphoric stage, 
Here comes those same thoughts again. This one looks better than me. This one has, you know, whatever, right? Whatever. And that's why we see so many people like that other lady, lady, I was talking about just gain the weight, always all the back. See the weight. Yes. The weight was a problem, but it wasn't the root problem. It wasn't the root problem. And I will tell you guys, and I am not exaggerating to you. I try not to misuse words. You know, I don't say hate. If I really didn't hate something, I don't say it was disgusting unless it really was. I don't try to use words for a dramatic effect. But after I closed that magazine, I felt sorry for Sunny. And the reason I felt sorry for her is because I know just based on what she told the interviewer, you haven't fixed your problem. And until you get to the root reason of why you were so self-conscious and why you didn't really like yourself and like the way you looked and all of those things, it's coming back. It's coming back. It's just a matter of time. It could be a year from now. It could be two years from now. It's kind of like for me, we all know that money does not make us happy, that money does not answer the cries of a human soul, that money was never intended to replace happiness, right? And wholeness and wellness that it actually can't. And all of us have heard the stories from the mouths of those who have everything. A lot of you know that famous quote, that people always talk about that Jim Carrey said, you know, when people learned that Jim Carrey struggled with depression, they were shocked. They said, oh my God, he's so funny. Not to mention that he's like uber rich. I mean, what does he have to be depressed about? And I remember he said, and a lot of you heard him say this, he said, my wish for every person would be that they could get everything they've always wanted. Listen to this, listen to this. He said, so that they can see it's not the answer. And he talked about how he had to do work on the inside. See, money's not going to fix this stuff. The inside issues, y'all, money can't touch that. See, we're going to have to actually do the work. There are so many iterations of this. Because I study along these lines, because I, I you know, teach along these lines, I, I can, right now I'm thinking of so many examples of where people thought, you know, well, when I get this, I'm going to be happy. When I get that, I'm going to be happy. Oh, when I finally can do this, then I'll be happy. And then they finally get, do whatever, get the job, be able to move from that apartment, get into the house, uh, move into the, the newness of things we're off. The excitement, like I said, that we're in the euphoric stage, we're just so excited. And then it wear, when it wears off, because it always does, then we're trying to find something else instead of realizing I've been approaching this my happiness, my joy, my fulfillment, my love for myself from the outside in. And it never works. It never works. Please hear me. It never works. I remember a thousand, excuse me, 2000 years ago when I uh, was doing investigative interviews, I, I remember because, you know, God uses different things to teach you. One of my favorite preachers is Joyce Meyer. I haven't listened to her in, a, in many, many years, but, you know, in the 90s, I was really a huge Joyce Meyer fan. And um, I, I just remember her talking about how, you know, she never went to Bible school. You know, God taught her at the grocery store. You know, he taught her different life principles and biblical principles by using stuff going on at the grocery store. Because, you know, God is the master teacher. Y'all do know that, right? And so he, you ain't got to go. If, for, if God wants you to get something, you're going to get it. If there's a lesson you need to get, you're going to get it. So I kind of felt like that when it came to that work, because I never went to school for any, you know, human behavior training or anything like that. But in that work all those years, because I'm naturally the kind of personality that tries to learn from every situation, which is a God given personality, just like you have a God given personality. So do I. Um, It was just, you know, a natural thing. And so every situation I would walk away thinking, okay, how can I learn from this? Da, 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 da. And I re- I can still remember when I first, when I, I'm going to say it this way, when God first started using situations to teach me about these things don't bring happiness to people. I remember interviewing people that lived in some of the most beautiful homes you can imagine. They had boats, they had a swimming pool, they had this, they had that, they had either had gotten an inheritance, some of them, or their, the, the, People themselves had worked very, very hard, been very successful, made some very great investments, 
And I remember walking into these edifices and these people, I mean, the closet full of clothes, beautiful shoes, you know, you could buy what you want. You can go out of the country anytime you want. And they were some of the most unhappy people. You know, their kids were in trouble or this or that, or they, somebody was on drugs or somebody was addicted to pain pills or whatever. And I remember during those times, God teaching me, you see, things don't fill the void because Think about it. How many trips can you really take? After a while, you're like, okay, I've been there, been there. Now what? <laughs> After you bought all the handbags and the shoes and the, then what? I mean, another black dress, another yellow sweater, another, you know, fill in the blank. And so I learned very, you know, early on that these things just, it just isn't the way. It's not the way. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't have nice things. I have nice things and I want more nice things. And I give nice things to people. I'm not saying that we shouldn't enjoy things and money and things. But what I'm saying is all of us need to realize that trying to fix the outside before we have fixed the inside, it never works. We wind up with the same problem because the problem was never really the outside. What I really felt when I closed that magazine, I thought, "Mm, I wonder how long for her it will take. Because I was thinking about all the people, you know, that I knew about. But I just thought, I wonder for her, because again, I said everyone's time length is different. I wonder for her, how long will the euphoric stage last? You know, because it was very clear to me that this was an internal thing. And why it really was, who knows? You know, we don't know all of her story. You know, Sunny did um, do a fantastic job in her memoir, I Am These Truths. A lot of us read it here. And she exposed a lot of her life. She exposed a lot of things. And as she told us on the show a few weeks ago, her mom got upset with her for that. You know, when they were talking about Harry uh, writing his memoir, Spare, you know, and and, and the fallout of all of that. Um, So I want to end by saying, you know, we can look at people and they have, you know, what we would deem all the things that make a person successful, a great career, right? Um, they could have great facial features. You know, not everyone is, is, is an attractive person. Let's be real about it. Okay. Let's be very real. Okay. Not everyone is pretty and not everyone is handsome. You know, some people just are, okay. Let's just, uh, you know, when I say are, I just mean they're just plain Jane or plain Joe, you know, that's just reality. Okay. Um, but When we look at people who we think, you know, uh, have what is real value, like some people, I remember Viola Davis saying that some people consider beauty being pretty or handsome as a value when it's really not because it fades. I mean, we look at these pictures of these movie stars, you know, uh, when they were younger and we see them now in their old age, we can see the beauty fades, the handsomeness fades, the great body fades after a while, you know, and you have to really work hard to keep the body looking great the way it did many, many years ago or whatever. Um, But we look at these people and they seem to have everything. I will tell you, as someone who uh, was very excited when Sunny started coming on the show, when she first started guest coasting. And then when she got that job in 2016, I will tell you that you couldn't have told me that this was a woman who was very self-conscious and who didn't like the way she looked. I mean, you couldn't have told me that, you know, because all of us, we know that you shouldn't judge a book by a cover. We know that, but we all do. I mean, it's just human nature. And people who say they don't do that, they're lying. (laughs) It's just some things are just basic human nature because it's a part of survival. You see somebody, you meet someone, and immediately your your brain is scanning. Are they safe person? Are they lying? I mean, it's just the stuff that you go through in your head as a human being, right? And so when I read this thing, I thought, wow, she's really opening up. Now, as I get ready to really end, I want to tell you something. You remember many, many, I guess it was a couple of months ago now, those of you who watch the show every day like me, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about, you know, barring emergencies and stuff. Remember when Anna said that Sunny was going through a midlife crisis, you know, because Sunny was showing us how she had gotten all her, her, her ear pierced and, uh, you know, like multiple piercings and stuff. You know, I wonder, I, I wonder, and again, this goes back to just, you know, what I study and what I train and teach. I wonder what's really going on with her. I wonder if there's trouble in her home. Um, Not that you have to have trouble to find your voice or to decide, hey, I'm going to do whatever. But very often that's how change comes about. People are in, we're in uncomfortable situations and we decide, hey, I'm just going to do what I've always wanted to do for myself. I remember one of the things I loved about Bruce um, 
excuse me, Caitlyn Jenner's story is when, when she was who she didn't want to be. I remember uh, she said that it was, she was just so unhappy. And so then she decided I think, I think Caitlin was what y'all 65, 64 when she really decided to live her truth. And she said, I, I just, so it was trouble. It was pressure that, that made her decide this is now the time. And so when I look at Sunny, I, I, I wonder, I do, I, I wonder. And, and maybe, you know, is nothing negative going on at all. Maybe she's just, like I said, finding who she really is. That happens. But again, if you look at uh, history, if you look at statistics, if you look at this, uh, the field of social science, people study these things. Normally that comes about because there's something going on that makes people say, I'm tired of uh, living for someone else. I'm tired of pretending to be happy when I'm not. One of the other things that I will point out here is that I, I really am proud of her because she, she's doing something now. Do I, again, I don't think it's going to be the, the, the lasting thing. Cause I don't think it addresses the root issue, but I'm proud of her because a lot of people have the ability to do things, to make themselves feel good. And they don't do them. You know, they don't do them. They, they just refuse to do them, whatever that is, you fill in the blank. And so sometimes we have to, um, start with the outside just to kind of get it going. But we all have to realize that the root problems are inner problems. And now as I end, I want to share this with you. About a year ago, I changed my definition of what a problem is for me, for my home. I changed it. Something was going on and I was like really stressed out about it. And then I sat and I thought, and I thought, you know what? I need to be grateful because number one, I can fix this. I have the money. I have the resources. I have, you know, access to people that can help me if if that's what it comes down to. And I I then said, you know what? This is not a problem. It's an inconvenience. (laughs) And so now I've practiced this now for almost a year. When something comes up, I say, wait a minute, is this really a problem? Because if I have the resources or I know somebody who does and all I got to do is make a call or whatever, or all I got to do is, you know, get the bank card, whatever, and fix it. Okay, this is not a problem because a problem should be something you can't fix that you can't fix. And I say to myself, no, this is an inconvenience. It's bothering me. I wish I didn't have to deal with it. I wish I didn't have to spend the money. I wish, you know, whatever the family didn't have to spend the money, but we have the money to spend or we have the resources, we have the insurance or we have the, you fill in the blank. And so I've now changed my definition, y'all, of, of a problem versus an inconvenience. Okay. But um, thank you so much for listening. Again, this was for those who could handle this and who understood what I'm saying and who were emotionally mature enough to understand what I'm saying. I am not saying that Sonny shouldn't have had plastic surgery. You have not heard me say that because I don't think that. Okay. So please be sure not to put those words in my mouth because that's not what I said, nor is that what I insinuated or meant. Y'all know folks try to read through words and try to figure stuff out. No, I just feel like after I read that interview that she had a deeper thing going on that I know from, from, from just life, this ain't going to fix it. It's, it's a great, it's a great reliever. It feels great and it's wonderful, but after a time that feeling is going to fade and the real root issue that never was fixed is going to raise its head. And some people get really depressed. They don't know because they don't understand like, well, I thought I fixed my problem, you know, but No, we have to really fix our problems, guys. And listen, I want to encourage everyone, if you are having any issues, I'm talking about things that you've tried to fix yourself and it just hasn't worked. Don't forget, there's therapy available. Get help. Get help from a trained professional. Listen, there's nothing wrong with asking for help when you need it. There's nothing weak about that, okay? You guys know, for the longest year, I've been offering 10% off your first month of therapy with BetterHelp. I'm going to put that link in the comment section, okay? So if you're going through a transition in life, if someone has, if something has happened and you really need help guiding someone to guide you through those changes and help you come out in in victory, don't be afraid to get help and don't be cheap. Don't feel like, well, I can't afford it. I will tell you when you use my code, your first month of therapy comes out to, if I'm not mistaken, like $200 and something or under 300 bucks. Uh, to get a month worth of therapy and you can choose your own therapist, the person who fits your life and your situation, you can choose their race, (laughs) their age, where they are. You can choose all of that. You can't beat that. So thanks so much for tuning in today. Listen, if you read the People Magazine article 
Let us know in the comments, what was your impression of uh, Sunny's interview? And I know we're all celebrating Sunny. Again, I think it's wonderful that she's done something that helped her feel good. Um, because again, folks don't do that. I don't know why, but they don't. But we all have to recognize that if we don't fix our root problems, they're, they, they haven't gone anywhere. Yeah, the fat may have gone, you know, the whatever, but the problem hadn't gone. It's still there and it's going to rear its head again. So thanks for tuning in. I'll talk to you later. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down to share the broadcast with a friend. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and I'll talk to you later. Bye guys.